Hey guys, so we are going to talk about oxidation and reduction or redox reactions. I'm going to do a couple of notes and then go through some practice problems with you guys. Uh, I'm going to talk pretty fast just so that I have more time for video uh, and it takes me less time to upload, but feel free to pause or rewind as much as you need to. All right, so we have this uh, chemical reaction. We have aluminum solid, fluorine gas, uh, and it's going to yield our two ions here. And the question is, which one is the oxi oxidizing, which one, which substance is undergoing oxidation and which substance is undergoing reduction? So the first thing we have to do is make sure we are referring to our rules, which are on page 641. Those are really important. Um, and so we see because of rule number one, the aluminum is just an element, so it has an oxi oxidation number of zero. The fluorine gas, also because of rule number one, is a diatomic element. It has an oxidation number of zero. And then over here, uh, because of rule number two, our aluminum ion has an oxidation number that's the same as its charge, so it has an oxidation number of positive three. And also because of rule number two, our fluorine ion has an oxidation number of negative one. Okay, so we're going to look at what's happening here. Uh, and you might remember from the reading this L-E-O-G-E-R. <clears throat> I usually just remember Leo. Um, loss of electrons is oxidation which basically tells me um, if it's losing electrons, it's becoming less negative, so it's gonna mean a, a higher number. Um, and so I'm looking at my aluminum here, and I'm seeing that it was an oxidation number of zero. Now it's an oxidation number of positive three, um, and that's because it's giving electrons away. So it's giving electrons which makes it a higher number, it goes from zero to positive three, so it's oxidation. <clears throat> and then we look over here at our fluorine, and I see that it's going from zero to negative one. That means it's taking an electron, it's becoming a lower number, And think about it this way, a lower number is re reducing its value, so it's reduction. And then there's a part in your book that talks about oxidizing agent or reducing agent. Um, and I don't remember what page that is on, but it's basically the opposite of what else. So since aluminum is undergoing oxidation, it is the reducing agent, meaning it is the thing that's allowing fluorine to undergo reduction. And since fluorine is um, undergoing reduction, it is the oxidizing agent. So they're just kind of opposites. Um, when you're talking about the oxidizing agent or the reducing agent, you're just talking about our two reactants and which one is causing the other substance to undergo that process. All right, so now we're gonna do a couple of practice problems. If you guys will turn to page 640, uh, we're gonna do number two and number three in the little yellow box at the bottom that says practice problems. So number two says, identify what is oxidized and what is reduced in the following processes. So, part A, we have two bromine ions and a chlorine diatomic atom. And we're going to become bromine molecule and a chlorine ion. And so we're just looking at what's happening to what. So I'm looking at my bromine. I see that it, it was negative 
one for each bromine, and now it's neutral or zero. So it went down, or it actually gained electrons. So that is oxidation. No. No, it gave away electrons. It, ha it was negative, and now it got it became. So it was negative one, and now it's zero. So it became it became more positive or a higher number. So it lost electrons, which is this once again this losing electrons is oxidation. So and then our chlorine. Let me switch colors here. Our chlorine was neutral or zero. And now it's negative one. Uh, and so it is gaining electrons, which is reduction, because it's reducing from zero to negative one. Okay, so I'm going to have you guys pause the video and try part B on your own. All right, so hopefully you paused your video and tried this on your own, and you found out that our oxidation uh, and that, oops, and our uh, copper is going from positive two to zero. So it is gaining electrons, which means it's, redu it's our reduction. Uh, all right, part C is talking about zinc and oxygen forming zinc oxide. This one's a little different because they don't have ions here for us. Um, it's, it's an ionic bond. We've got a metal and a non-metal, but we have to figure out what's happening. So this is going to go back to our our memory of how atoms are structured. So remember oxygen has six electrons in its valence shell. So it's going to take two electrons for each of these oxygens. Uh, and zinc, if you'll remember, is a transition metal. So that means because it's a transition metal, it means, you know, it can undergo different oxidation states, but it, it's going to be the one that's oxidized. So this is this color here. So it's giving its electrons and oxygen is going to be the reduced it's going to undergo reduction. Uh, and that's almost always true, uh, except if it's with fluorine. And that's because fluorine is the only element that's more electronegative than oxygen. So um, in that case, oxygen actually will be the oxidized substance. But other than, other than fluorine, with, when it's with fluorine, it's always going to be the thing that's reduced. It's always going to take the electrons. Okay, our next question is number three, and this one is a little different because it says, identify the oxidizing agent and the reducing agent in each of the following. So, uh, remember from what we talked about before, the oxidizing agent is the substance that's undergoing reduction, and the reducing agent is the substance that's undergoing oxidation. So, if we look at our magnesium and our iodide here, uh, just going back to basics, magnesium is a group two metal, and so it has two valence electrons, and iodine has two, three, four, seven valence electrons. Hopefully those are showing up for you. Uh, and so, if you guys remember us drawing it this way, each, ma each magnesium is, or this magnesium is going to give one electron to each of these iodine atoms. Um, so this is taking electrons, and this is giving electrons, and so because of that definition, um, the magnesium is going to be undergoing oxidation, which means it is our reducing agent, and our iodine is going to be undergoing reduction which means it is our oxidizing agent. So you would write the answer this way. Mg is the reducing agent and iodine is the oxidizing, oxid 
Ross advising agent. Okay, so if you will hit pause, please, and try parts B and C, both B and C. Hit pause. All right, so here is the answer to parts B and C. If you'll check yours, if you have questions about that, you can ask me during a one-on-one -on -one session, and I'd be happy to go over those with you. Uh, and then now we're going to move on to page 642, starting with number four. So if you'll turn your page to 642, it says, determine the oxidation number of the bold face element in the following formulas for compounds. So our first one is, so I think this is sodium perchlorate, NaCl04. Uh, and so we're going to, we're going to follow the rules here and figure out the oxidation number for chlorine. That's what it wants to know. So I know because of rule number five, that oxygen always has an oxida oxidation number of negative two. So this is negative two, but there's four of them. So it's a total of negative eight charge for my O4. And then I also know because of rule seven, that sodium is a group one metal. So it's gonna always have a plus one, according to rule seven in this situation. Um, and so, now I'm going to figure out my, my answer, I guess. Um, this is, uh, our, our molecule here is going to be neutral overall, so I need it to total up to zero. I have positive one something minus eight, and it has to equal zero. So this means that my chlorine needs to be a positive seven for this to be a true statement. One plus seven minus eight gives me zero. So this has to be an oxidation state of plus seven. Okay, so if you guys will pause the video now and try parts B and C. Try B and C, push pause. All right, so for part B, the, your phosphorus has to be a positive five. And for part C, your nitrogen has to be a positive three. Um, we haven't talked about hydrogen yet, but it has its own rule, which is rule six. So if you didn't get that one or you were confused, refer back to rule six. All right, so now we're gonna do number five, which is really the same thing, but it's talking about ions instead of neutral molecules. Okay, so uh, number five is talking about NH4 plus. This is, remember, a plus invisible one, so positive one. <clears throat> and this is our ammonium ion. Um, so if you refer back to rule six, once again, we're talking about hydrogen in this case being a positive one, but there's four of them. So that totals up to positive four. And in this case, I know that whatever the oxidation charge of nitrogen is, um, plus my four oxidation number for hydrogen needs to total up to my total charge for my ion, which is positive one. So that means that the nitrogen would have to be a negative three. So nitrogen's oxidation number here would be negative three. All right, so now go ahead and try parts B and C for number five. Push pause. Okay, so for our arsenate ion, we know the total charge is negative three. Our oxygens make negative eight, which means we need this to be a positive five oxi oxidation number for arsenic. And then for our chromium, it's the, basically the same thing, except we want it to be negative two instead of negative three, so we need a bigger positive number. So the chromium has to be a positive six. All right, if you have questions over this, please sign up for a time slot for one-on-one -on -one sessions. Thank you very much.